pored kolapsa elektronske industrije, mnogi ekonomski stručnjaci tvrde da jug Srbi ima ogroman potencijal u IT sektoru i imaju oni koji jug porede čak i sa Silikonskom dolinom gde je motor razvoja bio Univerzitet Stanford. Razgovaramo sa ambasadorom Michaelom Kirbyom, ambasadorom Sjedinih američkih država u Srbije. Mr. Kirby, da Srbija, or let's try to be focused on South Serbia, have potential to develop IT sector? I think the answer is yes. The question is, how do you do it? And um, I've come to understand a little about your combination of educational system and teaching young folks, one, the IT that they need, and two, how to do a business. And I think that um, you have a lot of opportunity here, from what I've seen, in people reaching out across borders. Um, I've seen an example in, in Novi Sad of professors being interested in helping create companies. I've seen a little less of that here in Niche. And I think modernizing that idea that you can both teach and make a company or you can be a student and work. I'm seeing more of the students and working than the teaching and making companies. Are the IT professionals, or let's say owners of private companies, aware of potential? Yeah, I mean, first on a <clears throat> practical basis, uh, last year, I went with then Prime Minister Dacic to the United States and we, were, uh, we went to Microsoft um, and we went also then down in Silicon Valley to um, Intel, Google, eBay, Apple, Oracle, Cisco, I mean big companies. First I was surprised um, at the number of Serbs in the States working in that industry. But second, um, part of that trip was to explain who's available here. There's interest on the part of our companies because they're constantly searching for new ideas. One I will say that surprised me, um, Intel was developing a new phone and the image capturing software was developed in Serbia for their worldwide thing. And that I think was a, that word has to get out a little more. Some really revolutionary stuff going on here. Uh, you will be a guest of the ceremony to mark the beginning of uh, Serbian USA Friendship Club. Uh, what could be the result of that club? Well, I, um, I hope what we see is, is a, a, an, an awareness that maybe we're not big bad guys. Um, and maybe in the friendship society they already think that. But um, open dialogue honest awareness, um, because I think that we're sort of trying to help create a future for people here that is a future of um, media like yours, that it's a future where people can develop both personally and professionally, and where they can have jobs. And I think that sometimes, whether it's friendship with us or Right now you need foreign investors, whether it's us or the Germans or the Russians or the Chinese or, I don't know, I've even heard of recently an investment from Bosnia coming into this area. So that's, I think, the goal. Uh, the fun founders of uh, Serbian USA Friendship Club are mentioning uh, bringing the, some American university to Niš as a possibility. Is there a chance for that? We as the federal government uh, don't do that. I think there's certainly our schools are looking to cooperate with uh, schools around the world. We have felt over the years that maybe Americans don't get out and about enough. We also think that our American education is a good product. Um, I don't know. I think I got a decent education. And um, so we're trying to expand in part to make our kids more aware of the world around them. Um, but it would be, I think, really a lot of cooperation. You have some good schools already here, and I think that that would be 
where we're likely to start cooperation between universities. At the same time, with the information about uh, beginning of work of uh, Serbian-American Friendship Club, uh, the deputy mayor of Niš recently accused journalists and CSO activists for being American agents and mercenaries. How do you see that? Geez, I didn't know you were either my agent or my mercenary, um, but, you know, maybe it's, a, it's a thoughts of what an NGO is about. And, and I think for us, um, we think an open society encourages people to get together who are concerned about a particular idea, um, say the environment or um, something else. I mean, and, and that they can form up together. Now, when you ask questions that are uncomfortable, um, people in power don't like having to answer those. We happen to think that a country is better off having awkward questions asked and having people have to answer them. If that makes everybody who asks uncomfortable questions, which I think NGOs do in part, they have a lot of other things they do. Well, maybe they think like us, but that isn't the reason that you're under our, an NGO is under our control or something. I, I think I'm not criticizing the particular gentleman, but I think you should accept difference. Uh, last week, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, uh, published an article related to Russian-Serbian humanitarian center based in Niš. Uh, Croatian, uh, Croatian journalist Drago Hedl, uh, who visited base, base on Niš airport, uh, claimed that it's not a military base. However, he left uh, open possibility to be converted. Uh, how the U.S. administration is looking at that, at that base? Well, you know, we had the flooding here last year, and uh, this May, and, um, you know, a lot of the countries pitched in and helped. As Serbia moves towards the European Union, the European Union doesn't have sub-regional disaster um, organizations. Give you an example, frequently, the Odernesa River area floods. That includes Czech, Poland, and Germany. And in the course of my experience, maybe five or six times it's flooded. But they haven't formed a group of just three countries to address that. It's part of the European Union that they're a part of. So we don't necessarily see in the long run a reason for a, just a plain Russian-Serbian one. Okay, when we are talking about uh, Russia-Serbia relations, a uh, very important topic is the uh, South Stream project. Uh, how do the U.S. administration look, that, look at the, the South Stream project? Well, energy is important to everybody. Um, here in Serbia, you have some natural gas of your own, and you have to import some. Uh, what we have um, been concerned about all over the world is multiple sources for your energy whether it's uh, natural gas, whether it's oil, whether it's electricity. And um, South Stream, it, perhaps someday will be built. Uh, but you also have the possibility of getting uh, natural gas also from, say, Azerbaijan through that way. You have a possibility now that uh, Cyprus seems to have discovered significant amounts of natural gas. That's close to here coming that way. You have in North Africa natural gas, Algeria, Libya. Um, and one of our concerns and one of the European concerns is, is that this pipeline should be able to have the flow go in different direction. I, in other words, both directions. So that depending on the economics and the price, you might be able to have gas that the Croatians are talking about having a liquid national natural gas facility in Kirk Island. So that that could come there 
and be shipped along a common pipeline. And so that's what we've also been talking about is if you construct the pipeline, is it only for one way and one gas? And, and so that's a concern of ours. But if they can work out um, the conditions, then I don't have a, my government doesn't have a particular problem with it, but we think that being able to flow both ways is important. Okay, let's, let's finish this interview with something nice. Uh, this has been fine too. I mean, let's talk about <laughs> youth. Let's youth? Say. Yes, uh, you were recently a guest of perform performance of uh, students from uh, high school from Nish. It was a theater, uh, theater show. Uh, they played Dennis Williams' uh, street, uh, street car named Desire. And you even uh, compare the main actor of that show with famous Marlon, Marlon Brando, Brando original movie from 1951. What was the... Well, it was fun to go to, and, and certainly Marlon Brando had a pretty good career, but I don't know how many Brando movies you've seen, but he was always almost impossible to understand. Marlon Brando spoke like this. <laughs> and, you know, I could actually understand the actor a little better than I could understand Marlon Brando. But plus, uh, I was lucky because my mom was in town and I was able to take her uh, to, to, to see the play, to see the kids. Um, you know, I was impressed with how well they did in a foreign language, in a foreign culture. Uh, because Tennessee Williams was writing about a period that was also different. I mean, it was even different from the United, rest of the United States. It was Louisiana, and it was uh, the South. I think they did a good job, and it was great to see kids doing something like that. And let me ask you one more thing. If you're a young man who lives in Serbia in this moment, what would you do with your life? Well, a young man who lives in Serbia who could be smart in anything he wanted to be or just with my own limitations? Yeah, whatever you <laughs> think. Well, I mean, what's, what's the best per perspective for uh, young people in Serbia in this moment? First, I think anybody ought to educate him or herself, whether it's a young man or a young woman. Um, and, and I was just at the high school that did the play today some bright kids there. I said, you have to learn to like to learn and to want to learn. So that would be my first one is to do that. If I was seeking a job right now in Serbia and I wanted to stay in Serbia, um, I might try something in the IT field if I were better in IT than I am. Um, you have... Um, some real possibilities now in the modern world to reach across the border and, and get a good income from a job in IT where you can stay in niche and do something for a Silicon Valley company or a company in Germany or a company someplace else and get a pretty good wage and be here where your costs are pretty low. I would, I would say though that do something that interests you. Um, if music is your thing and you're good at it, try to be good at what you can be good at. Don't just chase money. Um, you, if all you're doing is at getting an education for a job, well, I hope you like the job because my hope is you'll get one and you'll be working in that field for a long time. And if it's something you don't like, you're never going to be fulfilled. So explore. Be curious, um, work hard at whatever it is, and then, you know, I, I, I am optimistic that as you get into the EU, the economy is going to be turning around um, with domestic investors, foreign investors, then there's opportunities. My son-in-law is Spanish. He's in the States right now getting an MBA. He'll work for a company that I'm not going to name online here. Um, but I know that my daughter would like to go back and live in Spain. And so, you know, for some people, part of their path may be to get an education here, get some experience here, go abroad, 
get some experience, come back. Um, because the world right now should be their limit rather than any particular city. Because uh, Serbia is part of the world. And, and so uh, I also know that a lot of people are looking to the Middle East, UAE as a place for jobs. But come home every once in a while. Thank you for being, being the guest of Fusion Vesti in 15 minutes show. Razgovarali smo s ambasadorom Sjedinih američkih država u Srbiji, gospodinom Michaelom Kirbijem, moje ime je Predrag Blagojević.